I've been dealing with tendonitis in my right elbow for a really long time now. Recently, I tried a new treatment that really blew me away with just how effective it was, and it inspired me to make this video. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the root causes of what causes that type of tendonitis to begin with, the traditional methods of rehab, and then the very last topic I'm gonna to touch on is the uh, new treatment method that I've learned about. So to put this in context, I've been dealing with tendonitis for well over 10 years now. It's really the tennis elbow variety that happens on the outside of the elbow, not golfer's elbow, which is traditionally talked about being on the inside of the elbow. During that time, uh, I've just done a ton of research into different methods, listening to physical therapists, talking with doctors, working with different physicians, and I've learned a lot of things that can help manage it, but I haven't really learned anything that just really cures it yet. And that's why I wanted to talk to you guys today because of this last treatment that I'll share. But I would encourage you to watch the first several treatments that I talked to and also the root causes because there's some information here you may not be aware of. And depending on the severity of your situation, you may just be able to use one of these traditional methods for low or very little or no cost and uh, treat yourself and just be able to get back to golfing again. Before I talk to the root causes of tendonitis and the various rehab methods that I'm gonna cover in this video, I wanna make it abundantly clear. I am not a trained medical professional. These are my opinions based on my own experiences only. Before you try any of these rehabilitation techniques, I strongly urge you to discuss this with your medical professionals. So the very first thing that we're gonna talk about are the root causes of what causes tendonitis in your elbow in the first place. The very first thing that I've learned over the course of my 10 years of dealing with this issue is that the quality of the artificial turf that you practice on has a direct correlation to whether or not you're gonna start to develop tendonitis. I never had tendonitis before I bought my first artificial mat. And like a lot of folks, I bought something cheap. I had it set up in an outdoor setting in my backyard. We used to have a lot of acreage and I could hit a 80, 90 yard shot. So I used to practice wedge shots all the time on this artificial turf. And that's how I first developed my tendonitis. This was a really cheap turf. Uh, it really grabbed the head of the club and that type of, of motion, all that shock on your joint is really what starts to cause that. So if you're thinking about either setting up a practice bay or a sim like this, just make sure you save just a few extra dollars and buy you a good quality product to use for your practice. This is why every time I review a new product, I always talk about how does it work for the body and does it cause me any problems because I'm highly sensitive to the issue just because I've been injured so many times over the last 10 years. The second root cause of why you may develop tendonitis that I want to talk to is really a function of overuse and bad technique. So if you have a tendency to hit a really heavy or fat shot where you're hitting the ground first and then you're contacting the ball and you practice a lot, you put those two things together, you're putting a lot of strain on your elbow joint. And as a result, you're gonna develop tendonitis. So if you have a pattern where you hit a lot of heavy shots or fat shots, then I would really suggest that you go work with a professional golf coach and make sure you can get your ball striking dialed in such that you're not hitting those heavy fat shots. Because if you like to practice, and most golfers do, then you couple that heavy shot with that a lot of practice, you're gonna develop tendonitis. So the first technique I wanna to talk to with regards to how to rehab if you've got tendonitis is eccentric loading. So the idea of eccentric loading is you want to load your wrist so that you're putting all this strain on these tendons and on these muscles in your forearm and then very slowly lower your wrist. Now you can do this with like a barbell like I'm using here. This is probably a two pound barbell. You really want to use something around a pound maybe depending on how severe this is. But this type of motion, and you want to go to the full extent of motion, 
This kind of thing, what it does is it puts a little bit of stress on the tendon and that encourages the healing process. Now you don't have to have a barbell, you don't have to go buy anything. You could use some uh, bands like uh, the resistance bands that you can buy on Amazon. Uh, or you could use, you know, like a can of soup or a book, just anything so that you can kind of stabilize your arm, assist in raising it, and then just let it lower like this. This method is very effective uh, and it's very low cost. The next method is the same principle as the first one, but it does require buying something. This is a TheraBand, it's called a Flex Bar. You can buy them on Amazon and I'll link to it in the description below. And what you're trying to do with this is you're trying to grab it with both hands. You're going to twist it, align your hands like this, and then let it unroll through that tension and unroll your wrist. So again, twist, get your arm out here. I can feel it now. And you let it roll out like this. This works really well. They're 20, 30 bucks. They're not all that expensive. Uh, like I said, I will link to it in the description below. The other thing that I like about it is it's just very convenient. You could throw it in a bag. You could use it sitting in a chair in your family room. It's just an easy thing to use. And I really do think for the traditional methods of trying to recover from this, this helps a lot. The next technique I want to talk to is a form of massage that some physical therapists um, suggest is, is very effective. Basically what you want to do is you want to find where's the tendon at that is causing you the problem. And you just want to do like a really light to medium massage where you're just kind of going back and forth like a sawing motion basically. Now it may be tender at first, but it should stop hurting after say 20, 30 seconds or so. If it doesn't stop hurting, your situation is probably more severe and this technique is not gonna be helpful. So don't do it if it continues to hurt after say 30 seconds or so. The next item I'd like to talk about is some support through a compression sleeve. Now I know a lot of folks like these types of devices that you strap on to your arm. It's got a, an area here that pushes down onto these muscles right into your forearm. And it does stabilize it a little bit. Um, I'm not sure just how much this really helps. I haven't had a whole lot of success using this style. So what I like to use instead is a compression sleeve. So this is just a neoprene compression sleeve. You just slide it on find the size for your particular build. And what it does is it, it adds a little bit of support to the joint, which is helpful, but it also keeps the joint really warm. That stimulates some blood flow and that additional blood flow can help accelerate um, the body's healing of that tendon. So this is my preference to this. I will say this particular brand, I will link to it in the description. It was very inexpensive but it's not the best quality product. It's a little thin neoprene. I have another brand that I've used before for some knee braces that I really like. I'll link to that as well, but it's quite a bit more expensive than this. But there'll be two options in the description. The last method of treating tendonitis that I wanna to talk to today is a method that I learned about listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. He had a guest on, his name is Andrew Huberman and Andrew has a PhD in neurobiology. He's a tenured professor at Stanford, and he's really passionate about optimizing human performance. And he studies lots of different um, supplements and their effect on the human body. He even studies it on himself. Anyway, uh, Joe Rogan during the conversation mentioned that he had had a really bad case of tendonitis in his elbow, and the only thing that had allowed him to get over this injury was this uh, product. The product is a peptide, and a peptide is a short chain amino acid that occurs naturally in the body. So this particular peptide is called BPC-157. Now, the reason that you may not want to use this is because of the cost. It's a very expensive product. This particular product that I went with is 250 micrograms, there was 60 tablets, and it was $110. Now 
They also make a 500 microgram 60 tablet bottle and that sells for around $150. So it's an expensive option. And if you have a milder case of tendonitis that can be rehabbed using those other methods, that's why I included those in this video is because those are very low cost options and this is not. However, if you are suffering from severe cases of tendonitis and just can't seem to fix it, this may be an option for you. What I did was I took 500 micrograms a day for 30 days. Now to put this in context, I had hurt my arm weightlifting because you know, no good deed goes unpunished. I was only weightlifting to try to avoid injury and I ended up getting the absolute worst case of tendonitis I've ever had. So as a result of not being able to use my arm for a couple weeks, I couldn't shake hands, I couldn't lift a cup of coffee, I couldn't do anything with my right arm. I was learning how to use my non-dominant hand all the time just because my right arm was in such bad pain. So as a result, I thought I've got nothing to lose, let's try it. I used it for one month and I used it by itself along with that compression sleeve, that neoprene compression sleeve on my elbow just to try to increase some blood flow and just give it a little bit more support. One month later, I was 85 to 90% healed. I could swing a golf club again. I could start to you know, lift things, use my hands, shake hands with someone. I still have some pain in my elbow, but I think if I took it for another month, it would probably be almost completely gone. It was just so impressive just how much uh, improvement that it made. And that's really the reason I wanted to highlight this in a video for golfers is I doubt very many of you are going to listen to a three hour Andrew Huberman podcast or, you know, even Joe Rogan. Some folks don't have that much time. I spend a lot of time in the car with my full time job, so I get to listen to a lot of different stuff. Anyway, that's what I took. BPC 157. Um, I will link to this product down below. The only reason I went with this particular product, which was manufactured and distributed by InfiniWell, the only reason I went with them is their product had a lot of online reviews and folks were generally very happy about the outcome that they had when they were taking this. So I thought I would just give it a try. Uh, so again, InfiniWell BPC 157 is the peptide. Um, and again, this is a naturally occurring um, short chain amino acid that happens in the gut of the human body. So this is, you're not introducing chemicals and things like that into your body. This is something that the body naturally produces anyway. And it's just been discovered to have a lot of benefit for soft tissue injuries. As always guys, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me in the comment section below. I'd love to be able to uh, try to get you better information, maybe clarify something I've said during this video, or hear about your personal experience with how you've been dealing with this particular issue as well. Well, that's it for the golf nerd. Hit them long and straight, and I'll see you next time.